Thank you. A great panel discussion. All of you talked about targets, um, but I didn't get a clear sense, and maybe you could expand on it, what external references you use in setting targets. Uh, Leon, you did talk about asking stakeholders, but I wasn't really sure what the targets were that you were setting. And I think the, the others talked about the targets, but I didn't understand whether how those targets are linked to um, external expectations of what, as an industry, we should be doing. And I wonder if you could comment on that. Thank you. Well, again, we, when we first started out the sustainability uh, project, I'm going to call it, we, we went through, just like Leon did, a material, materiality analysis. So we had outside groups, and we had uh, my wife was one of, one of them, you know, ask, being asked these questions. We had the internal sources. We had, we had I forget how many it was. I'm going to say 250. Uh, but external stakeholders telling us what is the most important thing. What, when you think about the beef, when you think about the entire beef chain, what is most important to you as far as sustainability? So we took that. And, again, just like Leon, you know, we, we had health and welfare up in that top right-hand corner. We had greenhouse gases. We had energy, we had water use, and a few others. Health and safety. Is that? I'm not sure I answered your question or not. And maybe I might ask Hugo. Hugo, do you have? Do you want to share at all about how Cargill arrived at its science-based targets? Because that's that's not common necessarily across the industry yet. Yeah. Well, essentially, um, that's um, following the sustainable development goals um, that we um, have reviewed how we can. Um, apply the targets set there, and that's how we came to a science-based target, uh, as I explained, for total greenhouse gas emissions for Cargill in total. Um, now, I think there's certain areas where it's pretty straightforward to get um, an external reference and target aligned with that, and sustainable development goals is, is a great example of that. There are others where Essentially, it is more difficult, especially, I think, if you are trying to work in partnership with other members for the supply chain. And there, I think, our approach is really to focus on continuous improvement, making continuous improvement with your supply chain partners. So not just getting totally fixed on one target, but really trying to move ahead. A little bit, as was explained yesterday also, is to make sure that all of your supply chain partners participate in that process. So you're not only focused on the good farmers, but also those maybe who are a little bit behind, but where for which it would be a real, real significant benefit if you can move them to a better scale. Excellent. Thank you very much, Hugo. Let's do the next question. Thanks. My name is Thomas Sarkovic. I'm with Business in the Community Ireland. Um, I wanted to ask firstly on the Canadian example of the labeled certified sustainable beef, if that is being sold to customers at a premium, does it cost more or is that not part of the equation? And secondly, in general, I want to ask about labeling because I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated and, and there was a presentation on Brazilian carbon neutral beef on the other session. So I'd like to know in the case of Cargill if you're thinking about expanding that experience to other countries and obviously I'd like to know from, from the other to uh, meat producers and the, and the retailer if you would see that as, as a growing trend. I thought it was interesting to see the, um, the nutrition labeling, how we went from maybe not being so sure about it, now it's pretty mainstream. And uh, is carbon uh, or environmental impact the next trend? And would you be happy or unhappy about that? Thanks. I can speak a little bit to the labeling process that the CRSB went through. It was a fairly in-depth process. Uh, we do have a um, communications um, employee that handles uh, that committee. We sat at that committee. We defined the statements you could make, uh, if, if uh, what members could say, what the label meant. Um, we were very, very lucky that a lot of the retailers shared their market research with us so that we could fulfill um, their requirements in a label. 
As far as if they're selling it at a premium, the only one that's using the label right now is McDonald's. And Jeff, please correct me if I'm wrong. They're not attaching a premium to that product. They're, I think if you look at their long-term goal, is to be serving all sustainable meat in their restaurants. So... Yeah. The, the important factor is we're not charging any more for the consumer, and in fact we're paying CRSB a royalty fee for the use of the logo, which also then helps to support it. And the other element is through the Cargill Beast uh, Acceleration Pilot, we are one of the customers who's paying uh, the credit back to every aspect, so theater, background, nerd, how path, who delivers through that supply chain. So a fully certified supply chain. So not only are we not charging customers for it, we're paying for the use and paying uh, to accelerate the supply so that, as Deb said, hopefully they can source more. And and definitely from my company's point of view, uh, the desire is there to work with other packers to expand the program with Cargill. Um, we feel that it's got some real legs under it now. So, And Dr. Moll, do you want to speak at all to your comment earlier about the place that certification plays in a retail context? Because I thought you made some excellent points about that. Yeah, what we, what we in general see happening is that we certification plays a big role in uh, showing compliance within our supply chains, business to business compliance. It shows also a little bit to our professional external stakeholders, but has very little effect on our customers and it also uh, gains only little recognition. So yes, it's very important, uh, not that it's on the pack, but that there is compliance with the standard. Excellent. Let's take one more question before we adjourn. Uh, Carlos from WWF US. Uh, I think we saw a great example from, from McDonald's today this morning of a company that is taking very bold steps in making commitments to sustainable beef. So they have specific goals with a timeline to achieve, you know, uh, to, to get to sustainable beef in their, their whole supply chain. Uh, if you look at other commodities, palm oil, uh, sugar, uh, connected to, to sustainability standards like our SPO or, or to the bon sucro, companies are also making making commitments now to achieve a certain percentage of their supply chain being sustainable. So my question is to the companies. Are your companies also planning to do the same, to follow the example of, of McDonald's and make a bold commitment to sustainable beef and to adopt you know, the indicators and metrics in the countries where you are? Maybe that's a question for Mark and for Hugo to speak to. So, um, so on the, in the case of JBS or in the case of Cargill, you have made a number of public statements about your beef sustainability approach. Is there something else coming? Do you, do you foresee further development there? I, uh, boy, I hate to say this, but since I'm not on the sustainability team, really, I, I can't come. I don't know. So, Mark, your focus is really on driving sustainability in the plant as opposed to externally facing statements. That's right. Okay. All right, Hugo, do you have anything? Yeah, from our side, <clears throat> I think, um, you know, overall responsible sourcing is very broad. Uh, today we're talking about beef, but <clears throat> as you correctly indicate, um, there are multiple commodities and products that generate environmental concerns for stakeholders and in particular for consumers. So we are also, as Cargill, focusing enormously on sustainable palm oil sourcing, um, looking at sustainable soy from uh, South America in particular, where you know there's important concerns about deforestation. So we're, we're looking at those. And I'm sure that this is a continuous societal debate and in the future, you will have new commodities, new areas where there is concerns. And what's important is to make sure that as industry, we always listen to those concerns and we develop proactive strategies to be able to deal with those concerns and to reassure our consumers. That's really what's key. Excellent. And for IFA, um, would it be fair to say that KEPAC's approach is to work in close coordination with Board BIA and the Origin Green program as it relates to externally facing sustainability commitments? 
Yeah, um, I suppose we've, as part of our sustainability programme, we've set out targets to have um, 96, over 96% um, of our cattle in Ireland sourced from Board B Equality Short Farms. So that I suppose, we've, and we've the same targets in around lamb and in around pork. Um, the UK piece, obviously, um, with our recent acquisition is, is, is new in the last few months, so the targets for that have, will be set out before the end of the year. But I would imagine they'd, they'd cover the same or a similar approach. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I hope that you all found this as interesting as I did. I know that um, there'll be an opportunity to chat a bit as we take our break now. We are going to reconvene at 3 o'clock for the final general session. Um, so I'd like to now have you join me in thanking our panel. They did a wonderful job of talking about their work. <laughs>